So, uh, hi. Um, today I'm talking to Jason Duff of um, Earl of Fife. Uh, Jason and I, um, we first kind of came into contact through um, doing some work, or well, releasing uh, titles for Grim and Perilous. So, um, yeah, I'd like to introduce uh, Jason. Hello. I'm Jason, uh, Earl of Fife Games. And like Peter said, we met over on the Zweihander Discord a couple of years ago. And here we are. Right. So, yeah, so um, I've talked about Jason's um, games uh, several times on my blog. Um, you might have heard me mention um, sort of uh, the Heroes and Hardships and um, the uh, Forever Winter, which was probably the first time I ever came across Jason was his Forever Winter um, title. But what we really want to talk today about is um, the uh, Heroes and Hardships. And my interest in that is I'm going to be writing the solo rules uh, for it. Um, so, yeah, that's that kind of that's the uh, sort of where I come into it. Uh, but how long have you been writing for um, games? Because you actually started before um, I met you through Grim of Paradise. Uh, not 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 too long before um i i had i released forever winter for shadow of the demon lord a couple months before zweihander and uh so that was the first game i ever released as a semi hobbyist publisher um with a couple guys that i had gamed with wrote some of it um i wrote some of it but i did all the layout and, and stuff like that um so that was in 2019 like september of 2019 i want to say so, yeah. All right, yeah, cool. Uh, I think I I got started with Grim and Paris in uh, late 2018. So, yeah, I was there just a little bit before yeah. you. Um, yes, I was also in the um, uh, Disciples of the Demon Lords uh, mm -hmm. uh, community content program. So you've, you've also made that transition from writing from um, uh, community content into being your own publisher. Yeah, I did. Um, I thought that, you know, I when I first started doing this, I didn't have really any kind of grand plans of anything, right? I was just like, yeah, no, this would be interesting to do something like this. And, you know, it, it's much easier to, like, piggyback off a, a, a CCP program, a community content program, than it is doing your own thing. And I, did, I didn't even understand what the options were at the time, you know. And uh, it, I... I did that and then, you know, after talking to everybody and kind of understanding where, what I could do, um, and I have uh, a, f a friend that actually I play, I play with, uh, he uh, is, does Arcanum Syndicate, so that's Brandon Williams over and does Demon Gate, and he's like, why don't you release some stuff for Demon Gate, and I was like, okay, and that was, I think, I think um, one of the Demon Gate adventures was the first uh game I did just on my publisher side so um, it was nice because I had like support of him too for his fans he's like you know go here and buy this game and so yeah that's where it started oh cool yeah so um yeah I again this is kind of shadowing a lot of what I did I started very much as a hobbyist um uh, <laughs> My wife is very into what we it, the TV program is called uh, Strictly Come Dancing. I think it's Dancing to the Stars. Okay, in, yeah, in America. right, yeah. And it's hours and hours. And <laughs> in the time I could watch, in time that she could watch an episode, I could write a small adventure. Yeah. And that's kind of how I got got into it. But yeah, um, I think around the, the the first thing that really struck me uh, with your uh, where it was. Um, Forever Winter, first of all, and then you did a series of them. Was the uh, production standards you used? You know, you were streets ahead of everything else in the community libraries that I saw. Yeah, I, you know, at the time, I, I wanted to try to do it right. You know, what I perceived as right, and you know, what I had played and done mostly were bigger games, right? I didn't, at the time, hadn't really been exposed to many any games. So 
I saw the production value of those things and I tried to replicate them the best I could with the money I had at the time. And it's kind of a funny story. Um, like all the seed money for Earl of Five Games came from me uh, purchasing a huge lot of old D&D books. The guy clearly had no idea what their value was or didn't care. And it was, it was a really big box of, you know, old you know, basic D and D and AD and D and I sold them all <laughs> and I made like $1,500 and I used all that money to buy the art for forever winter. Um, and you know, even like the layout, I did all the layout for forever winter. And now if I had had it over to do, I would do it completely different. Right. You know, it was my first thing I ever did, but yeah, I tried to get good art assets, um, for the price at the time. Um, and yeah, so I, I didn't know any, any different really, I guess, is why I did it. If I, if I would have known, hey, you can not do this, you can buy stock art, or you can not actually even have art, I might have went that route. Um, it wasn't a purposeful thing to say, well, I really want to be head and tails above everybody else. It was just kind of, I thought that's what you had to do. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it certainly kind of hurts. Yeah. You know, um especially when you know that there seems that thing about kind of going to standardized covers which was a ridiculous idea in my opinion you know why make everything look the same yeah when, and you say you you bucked that trend and you know, it really made your title stand out yeah um so <laughs> you you've all, you yeah so you you did that transition from the community content programs to the um earl of fife and of course that's when i first heard of um heroes and hardships yeah and uh of course I, i'm yeah i'm right at the very top of scotland um actually right. off the mainland but it's, and it, it, it was wallace um was the, yeah. the first thing um that i think i read of yours so that's the quick start adventure isn't it or it it, go, it, it came out about the same time as the quick start yeah it came out a couple months later uh i had been working so heroes and hardships i've been working on since 2017 technically uh even before i started releasing games just playing around with some some ideas i had um you know i'm a really big fan of the legends of the five ring system the John Wick systems, like Seventh C First Edition, and those dice pools, and I was kind of playing around with how I could, how I could change that a bit and and work with it, and that that's what ended up being Heroes and Hardships. Um, so finally, I got to a point where it was, you know, I had done a big campaign play testing it. I had done several one shots play testing it, uh, and it was ready to kind of go into a semi formal. Um, PDF at least, and I did that. Uh, <clears throat> so that was a quick start guide. It's 96 pages. It is. There, I mean, that's not all. I mean, some of it's index, some of it's table of contents, whatever. Um, but um, it is. Uh, it has been continually revi revised over time to match kind of what I've done after it, because that was in 2020. I, I think I released that. Um, so, uh, over the last two years, I've revised it to kind of fit the changes I've made to the system. And yeah, I made, I made Wallace as a compatible game to the quick start guide, which was easy to do, um, because, you know, uh, it, Wallace is meant to be a semi-historical adventure and setting primer. And so, um, you know, there's no magic or anything like that. So it's, it wasn't hard to kind of mix those two together. So, because the quick start guide doesn't have magic. So. Yeah, cool. So this is the, the big thing, right? It, it's, as far as I know, the next big thing on your horizon is actually Heroes and Hardships, but is. the Kickstarter, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It is. Uh, so sometime next month, this is recorded in August 2022. So in September of 2022, and date is a little flexible, but um, <clears throat> we're going to release the Kickstarter for Heroes and Hardships Core Rulebook. So, I mean, like Peter was saying uh, about the, the production quality, it's a uh, whole different level from anything I've done before. Um, you know, it's been in development since 2017. 
Um, but truly in the last two years, um, after the quick start guide, I kind of, you know, wasn't doing as much on it as I probably should. Then kind of this year came around and it was, I, I had everything written and play tested and it was ready for editing. So I sent it over to Tyler Thompson of Sadfish Games to edit it. Uh, he edited a 280 some page manuscript. Um, and then when I actually laid it out, it ended up being two and four, 248 pages actually d decreased, which was, I was surprised, but it's just because it's just how sloppy the manuscript was as far as formatting goes. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's ready for Kickstarter. The, the actual Kickstarter page is pretty much built. I'm just, uh, kind of doing some finalization for fulfillment and, and things like that. But, the what you'll get in the, in the Kickstarter, if you're, uh, interested is, uh, you can get the PDF, uh, for $20. You can get the hardcover book, which is being printed by Standart Impreza in Lithuania. And for those, prob probably most people don't know what this, who they are, but they print for, big companies like Modifius and Free League. So we're going to have a good printer uh, that's used to doing this sort of thing. And uh, the book is a soft touch touch mat um, with a ribbon and uh, silk uh, silk coating. It's, it's, it's very nice. Um, and so, yeah, that's, and you get that for 50. And then there's a couple other uh, tiers as well. And if you, if you pledge for the 50 tier, you get all my PDFs for free that I've done so far. So, any adventure I've done, there's 28 PDFs total that you would get for free. And and then if you pledge a little more, you get the uh, print-on-demand codes for those if they exist. So, Yeah, and tons of stretch goals, and one of them is Peter's solo rules, which I'm very interested in seeing. So, uh, yeah, let's hit that goal for sure. Yeah, uh, they're a really big printer in Europe. Um, so, yeah, they're probably, better, they're probably better known for people on my side of the pond than yeah. yours. Yeah, they, um, they, they did, uh, they did the, the one ring second edition, for instance, I know they did that book specifically. Uh, there's, there's a couple of big printers in Lithuania. There's a Livonia print, uh, as well. And they do a lot of Modifius and free league stuff as well. So, yeah. But. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I did my first Kickstarter this year and yeah, yeah I, I, I I can't help but feel that it was actually easier going from never having written anything and getting my first few titles out than it was being supposedly established and actually doing your first Kickstarter and trying, trying not to really screw it up. It, is that your experience? Is it just that? It, it's just like a whole new, new thing for me. Um, right. It's, you know, I've, I've, made sure to do the best I could to keep myself from screwing up. Like you say, I've hired a marketing firm, uh, in, in this space, right? Not just a marketing firm, but a, people that are knowledgeable about doing games. Number one, they're a game company and doing Kickstarters and doing fulfillment. So they're going to do everything. Um, and so they've helped kind of guide me to do the right things. Now I had someone, a different marketing company before and so and they were very not responsive and so unresponsive so i i went and did the whole like kickstarter thing myself and then i got the new car marketing company was like yeah maybe you should change all this pretty much and so um it, it, it was interesting right it's like um and now now supposedly they're telling people yeah do it like earl of fife is doing it um, so that's, that feels good, but yeah, what, what I have is just a kind of, for those interested in the kind of Kickstarter, what you do in Kickstarter, it's, uh, you know, you make, you, you could do it a bunch of different ways, but you know, you, you set it up to be graphically pleasing if you can, right. And anything you can help for, you know, getting people on board, um, to, to, back your your game it's like you know you make this game for years i haven't even like barely opened the indesign file in two months because i <laughs> yeah it's like that that part of the the thing is over right unless i get a new piece of art to put it in i haven't really done anything you know where i need to export a certain image but yeah it's now it's all marketing 
all marketing, all marketing and fulfillment. So yeah, it's, it's a different world. It's definitely different than anything yeah. I've ever done. Yeah. So, yeah. I think what got me was the fact that it's so much higher stakes than you know, when you're, when you're really starting out, no one has any expectations of you. Yeah. No one knows you. No one really cares. And if something bombs, then it doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see it again. But with your Kickstarter, you're kind of saying, hey, come and look at this. This is great. You know, yeah. you know give me all your money. And, um, you know, and, and at the end of it, it's pass or fail, isn't it? It's it kind is. of you've got this goal or you haven't. Um, when I uh, post this video, I'll, I'll make sure I've got the links. Have you got an, an email sign up form um, for, to follow the uh, campaign? Yep. Um, I'll make sure that's under there so people want to have a look at it. Now, you were saying that the, the kind of the, the DNA at the uh, very basis of um, Heroes and Hardships was from sort of the Seventh Sea, um, yep. John Wick mm -hmm. stuff, which was one of my very first solo rules, uh, oh, nice. funny enough. Uh, and it was actually the very first thing that I automated using JavaScript as well, so I could <laughs> um, didn't have to use hundreds of dice. Yeah. Um, and I, I still play it now. So, uh, yeah, it's a, a great game. Yeah, Does I'm actually it, looking forward to writing the rules for that. Yeah, it's it's a very uh, I I always like that um, D10 dice pool system with exploding dice, um, and I, I did I didn't mind the math that came with that. Um, so so yeah, that's 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 the DNA of of the dice pool system. But there's after that, it's it's quite different. Um, I had some design philosophies that I like in games or I don't like in games that drove me to do everything in Heroes and Hardships. So, uh, like, I don't like hit points particularly um, in most cases. So there's no hit points in Heroes and Hardships. Uh, I like D10 dice pools, so there's that. Um, I like exploding dice, so there's that. Um, I don't like... I find combat rounds a little... You know, most games have combat rounds, and you just you just accept that. But uh, I kind of wanted to do something that would keep more people engaged more often. Um, so I kind of don't do combat rounds in Heroes and Hardships. It, it uses an action point uh, system that's different than anything I've I've seen. Um, I don't I don't know why that is. It's just uh, it it's more like a, a Japanese uh, video game RPG, right? Where you continue whoever's whoever does the quickest actions goes again that's the general gist of it without explaining in detail but yeah there's there's just some design philosophies that i want to do i want to have meaningful injuries and and that sort of thing the, the things i liked in games is what i put in heroes and hardships and things i didn't like in games i changed like keeping track of currency that's not something I like to do in games, so it's highly abstracted in Heroes and Hardships. Um, so, but yeah, things like that, yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. You know, it's um, a lot of the stuff we just accept as standard, it actually comes right from, from the t tabletop wargaming, you know, and yeah. turn-based um, strategic combat. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, there's, there's no reason to keep it at all. Yeah. Um, it's it just a lot of people, like especially rounds, a lot of people just kind of like don't pay attention, right? It, until it's like close to their turn or their turn, right? So it's like, how do you keep people engaged in that long period of time if you're going to have combat? It's usually a, a significant portion of your play time um, because, you know, it's, you know, it's a structured thing and you have to go by, you know, slow it slows everything down and so how, how do you mm. keep everybody engaged as much as you can and that that's one of the things i was thinking of when i did that so i think it works hey cool uh well i think that's just about all uh, uh, I've, I've got it's just i yeah. wanted to really introduce people to the whole idea of heroes and hardships um and you know obviously for my audience it's primarily a solo audience yeah. And um, I do mean I've got more than one person, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. And you say I'll be uh, coming on board to do these solo rules for your um, stretch goal. Yep. Actually, I'm going to make them anyway. But yeah, hopefully there'll be a, a stretch goal. Yep. For it. Um, is there anything else you, you know, want to? Yeah. For 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 <laughs> yeah. solo players, I think I think the game will give you like a great 
uh, dynamic experience, um, and I, I think I think that with with Peter's solo rules that he'll work on, um, I think this could be a system that you would be interested in. You can create the character you want. There's really no uh, there's hundreds of options for whatever you want to do, um, and I think that uh, it you you know if if you're a solo player and you want to play some very strange setting or so, something that's not totally you know represented in role-playing games i know that's hard to find but something that is either underrepresented or um you know something you're very interested in like a modern detective game that's always one i kind of use like there's not a lot of that out there S stuff like that you can do that in this system it's no problem you can do fantasy you can do sci-fi you can do a mix-up of all that together um i think that uh it would be um uh, an interesting thing to try and I think that you could do anything you wanted with the system and so if you're looking for that kind of and, and there's a lot of optional rules and I'm not going to like continue to talk about it but um, you can play the game your way and I think with Peter's solo rules and even in group play as well I think it's a, it's a good system um, to to explore anything that you might want and get away from you know um, you know things that you see uh, on a day to day, um, with, you know, settings and systems kind of combined, um, where you might not like one or like the other and that sort of thing. So I think you should give it a try. Uh, and if you're interested, uh, there'd be links here in this video, uh, or in the description of this video for the Kickstarter page. And remember we're going live in September sometime. Uh, and so if, but you won't have to worry about it. If you go there and just click on the notify link, uh, when it goes live, you'll get an email and they will tell you that it is live and you can go back whatever tier you want. Um, and if you're interested in any of my other PDFs, uh, just wait, don't buy it now. Just go and um, pledge at the $50 level and get a nice hardback book and get all those for free. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, cool. Yeah, I say that's one of the things actually that did strike me about Heroes and Hardships is it's quite nice to have a kind of rules medium um, generic system. So, yeah. you know, because soloists uh, are notorious for hopping about and doing, you know, you know, Fantasy one day, yeah. New York detective yeah. the next, you know. Um, zombies, yeah. And if you've got a generic system that's kind of um, not as crunchy as GURPS, um, yeah. but you know, if you, not everyone likes the really really rules like stuff. So yeah, yeah, cool. I'm really looking forward to. I haven't seen the um, uh, the final version yet. I don't think. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. All right. Um, uh, thank you for uh, sparing the time. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Okay, I'll catch up with you on Discord later. Yeah, okay. okay.